Dr. James Dowd, author of The Vitamin D Cure. Uh, we've talked a lot about vitamin D and how we can get it. How much do we need each day? I think that's a big question that most people want to know. So um, daily dose of vitamin D. Uh, so I, I think about these things, and I think, okay, my, my overall tenant for, for now for practicing medicine and for thinking about biology, um, health and disease, is... What's, I try to, what's Mother Nature, what was her thinking here, okay? Not that this was a, a, a forward thinking, okay, come up with a blueprint and then the, and the design the world ahead of time. It, it's this beautiful thing that's, that's designing itself all the time and adapting all the time. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I try and understand problems in the context of, 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 uh, of that nature. And so you think, okay, I'm a caveman. I'm hanging out in the, in the, in the forest, on the edge of the forest. Um, uh, and um, how many days am I actually out in the sun, half naked, and how many days am I just uh, hanging out in the cave? Um, uh, and it's probably not every day that I'm out in the sun, and it's certainly not every day that the sun is out, mm -hmm. right? So um, when you think about it as a daily dose, eh, there probably isn't a daily dose. There's probably an average amount of sun exposure that results in an average amount of vitamin D that you can measure in your bloodstream. Um, and it makes sense it's that because the half-life of vitamin D is about 10 weeks. Okay. So if your vitamin D level is, this was really cool stuff. They did this in Navy submarine sailors. What a perfect <laughs> crew, to, crew to use. So they measured their vitamin D levels before they went under for mm -hmm. a, usually they would go under for a two-month uh, two stint. And they wouldn't surface for two months. Okay. No sun I, I would go crazy for, for, that, for <laughs> in doing that. But So they measured their D. They'd go under for two months. They'd come back up, um, uh, and they'd measure their D just before they came back up. And you would, you could, it's a perfect pharmacokinetic study to see what the decay is of mm -hmm. vitamin D um, uh, without changing any other variables. Um, and from those data, we know that the decay rate of vitamin D3 is about 10 weeks to drop in half. Okay. Okay? So... <clears throat> That's pretty long time. So if you jack your D levels up and they're 50, um, it drifts down very slowly over 10 weeks. So you don't need to get a dose every day to keep it there. Um, uh, uh, you just need to get, on average, over a period of a month enough to keep it from drifting down mm -hmm. too far. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't want it to drop in half between doses. Um, uh, you want it to drop maybe by 25%. So maybe every two or three weeks you could get a dose and that might be enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that half-life. Sure. Okay, so that tells us you don't really need to dose it every day. That's actually a nice thing to know. Why? Because kids don't like taking vitamin D gel caps. <laughs> kids don't like swallowing things. And so do you really want to struggle with this child every morning to get their mm -hmm. vitamin D in them? No. Yep. And you don't have to. Okay, you can say on Sunday, I'm going to give them, um, uh, um, there, there are actually some D drop products out there. Um, uh, one of them at the top was actually designed by um, Reinhold Wieth, this world researcher, and so it measures the exact amount every time, which is different from droppers where you have to squeeze, and it's big sure. drops, little drops, okay. Um, uh, and so you can say, well, okay, if, um, uh, if my child needs 1,000 units and it's 1,000 units per drop, I'm going to give them seven drops on Sunday, and I don't have to hassle with it every morning before school. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Right? Yeah. And adults can do the same thing. So you can say, well, if I need 4,000 units a day and I just can't remember, to, I'm just not in the habit of taking stuff every day, because its half life is 10 weeks, you can take it once a week too. Okay? You probably could take it once a month, but um, you, you know how many gel caps that would be? It's just it's a little untenable <laughs> yeah. at that point. But so um, uh, it comes in 2,000 unit gel mm -hmm. caps commonly now, so you could take. 14 of those on Sunday, or you could take seven on Saturday and seven on Sunday and be done for the week. Then you don't have to remember it on the weekdays when you've got so many other things going on mm -hmm. in the morning rushing to get out of the house. So that's the advantage of D3, which is the primary form of vitamin D that's available over the counter um, in, in supplement form. Vitamin D2 um, uh, is a, a little different story. Vitamin D2 is the primary form of prescription D mm. that doctors prescribe. The disadvantage of vitamin D2 is that its half-life is very short. Its half-life is about 
um, seven days. So in two weeks, it's gone. All right? Okay. And its peak isn't. So if you give 10,000 units of D2 to a patient uh, and, and 10,000 units of D3 to a, a, another group of patients and then follow their blood levels, the peak of D2 is half as high as the peak of D3, and it disappears eight times, five, seven times faster. Mm, okay. So unfortunately, a lot of doctors are prescribing 50,000 units of D2 once a month in adults or nursing home patients, and it's doing absolutely nothing. Because, it's because that 50,000 is really the equivalent of 10,000 units of D3, um, but it's also disappearing at five or six times the rate, mm -hmm. which means in two weeks that 50,000 is gone. And so for two months out of, if they do it once a month, for two weeks out of the month, you have no vitamin D, mm -hmm. okay? And for the other two weeks out of the month, you get a little bit, just a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? So D2 is really a lousy thing to supplement. I don't use it. I don't recommend it. Um, uh, and I recommend getting something over the counter. It's less expensive, it's more potent, has a longer half-life, it's what our body makes from sunlight, it's what mm -hmm. we, we make for ourselves, not a plant-sourced vitamin D. Um, uh, and although we think that D2 functions the same way as D3, nobody's actually looked at D2 in all of the different facets that, that, mm -hmm. uh, that have been studied with D3. So we don't know for certain that it's exactly the same. So I encourage patients to stick primarily to D3 as a supplement. Get it over the counter. It's less expensive. You can dose it daily if you like, if you have a little pill thing and it makes it easy for you, or you can dose it weekly to make it convenient for children or adults that sure. uh, can't remember to take it.